Today on the channel, we're breaking some new ground. It's my first time trying and reviewing a Curry mouthpiece. So if you want to learn more about it, make sure to strap in and stay tuned. Without further ado, welcome back to Mouthpiece Spotlight. How's it going, everybody? It's Sam here from the Samuel Plays Brass channel. I appreciate you tuning in, and I hope you're all doing well on this fine day. In the spotlight today, we've got a cool little cornet mouthpiece that belongs to a section mate of mine, my friend Mike in the Spokane Brass Band. He got a look at my Yamaha 16E, which I was using at the time, which, by the way, I've reviewed full video up in the card, and he went, huh, that looks cool. I want to try that out. So we traded mouthpieces, and for a couple weeks, I got to play on his Curry 3 BBC, or Brass Band Cup. So let's start off by going straight to the horse's mouth and seeing what the Curry website itself has to say about the Model 3 BBC. That 3 at the start refers to a 16.9mm or .665 inch inner diameter, and that is right in the same ballpark as things like a Bach 1.5, a, a Yamaha or Shoki 16, a Dennis Wick 2. The BBC once again refers to the Brass Band Cornet Cup, about which Curry says, the deepest cornet cup of the Curry line is now available in all Curry standard line rim diameters. A deep concave funnel type cup with a relaxed second cup and 0 .160 inch or 4.07 millimeter bore gives this cup the breadth of sound to play in most brass band settings. While not as deep as some other manufacturer's models, this cup was designed for both great sound and maximum playability. So let's discuss that BBC cup in a little bit more depth. We have here to my left my most oversimplified, mediocre, MS Paint style cross sections of four different brass band cornet mouthpieces. Three of these are ones I've actually used pretty extensively. I started off on a Dennis Wick 2, realized that was a little bit too much of a pig, and went to a Yamaha 16E, and then I ended up on a Dennis Wick 2B. And the reasons for that are a little bit complicated, but we'll start to approach that point as we get there. For now, I want to discuss that we're talking about two separate parameters when we look at this diagram. Firstly, the depth of the mouthpiece, and then we also have to discuss the shape of the cup, not just the depth. There are two different shapes here if we really want to generalize, although in reality there's a spectrum between the two, and no mouthpiece is exactly one or the other. But we have here the V cup, like the BBC, which has those sides that slant in to form a V shape. And then we have a shape that looks more like the letter U, or a bowl. We often call this a bowl cup. I don't know why we don't call it a U cup. We just kind of don't in the brass world for some reason. But anyway, the bowl cup has sides that kind of come down almost straight and then taper inward more more rounded off towards the bottom, and that's what creates the bowl shape. Now, a bowl shape actually has more volume than a V shape. You can kind of see what my hands are doing there. Bowl, V. And so, when you look at the Curry 3BBC, you can see it's a similar depth in literal terms to the more bowl-shaped Dennis Wick 2B, but it is actually a little bit less voluminous on the inside because of that V-shape. It's more similar in cup shape to the Yamaha 16E, which is deeper, more like a Dennis Wick no-letter mouthpiece. So the Dennis Wick 2 ends up being the most cavernous of all the mouthpieces. It's the deeper depth and the wider sort of cup shape due to that U-shape as opposed to the V. So it is the least efficient and the most taxing to play. The Yamaha and the Dennis Wick 2B end up being very similar. Whereas one is deeper but more V-shaped, the other is a little bit shallower but more bowl-shaped, and so they end up having a very similar volume and playing experience, and fairly similar sounds, though we'll touch more on that later. And then, the Curry 3 BBC, which is a similar depth to that 2B but a more V-shape, ends up being the most efficient and least taxing of all. So when I pitted the Curry 3 BBC against the Dennis Wick 2B, which is now what I most often use in brass band, I did find it to be more efficient and it was less tiring to play for long periods of time, but I found it markedly lacking in the tone department, which is a big thing for me with cornet mouthpieces, and it's actually a similar effect to what happened when I went off of that Dennis Wick 2, the really cavernous one, to the Yamaha 16E. The 16E was much, much easier to play, but I lost some of that tone. And actually the reason I snuck over to that 2B afterward was because I found it to have a little bit more of that fluffy bowl cuff tone that I desired, as opposed to that more efficient and straight ahead V sound. Now the shape of the BBC cup has some really interesting ramifications on the way the mouthpiece sounds. You can't really pin one sort of sound quality on it. It's a very nuanced sort of mouthpiece, and it doesn't end up 
averaging out to my preferred brass band sound, even though it is Curry's answer to the brass band dilemma, but it really is interesting. If we examine things a little bit more closely, at Pianissimo, this thing sounds as whispery as my Dennis Wick 2B, and that surprised me based on my mezzo forte first impressions. The way it works with the BBC Cup is at those piano and pianissimo dynamics, you get that really soft and buttery sound, then you cross that mezzo piano line and it's a little bit brighter, a little bit too much so for my sensibilities, you cross over the forte or forte plus line, and up beyond that, it wails. I don't know if you noticed in the intro clip, but if you're used to the more sensitive traditional brass band sound where the cornet players are all on Dennis Wick mouthpieces, this thing is bright. It wails to a much greater extent than any Dennis Wick cup that I know of, besides maybe the S cup for soprano cornet, but that's a different ball game entirely. I think the reason we have that super buttery soft side just for those lowest couple dynamics is because of that second cup that the website mentioned. I don't think it's as pronounced as something like a Parduba double cup, but what I notice about the mouthpiece is that V cup doesn't just angle straight into the throat of the mouthpiece. There's a very rounded sort of fillet between the V shape and the throat down at the bottom of the cup. And that roundedness or that second cup, though it's not super pronounced, tends to add a little bit more whisperiness at the softer dynamics without affecting the louder dynamics very much. This is an observation I noticed with some GR Nelly mouthpieces I reviewed a while back, once again, up in the card. And so I think that second cup is why we have the buttery soft side, whereas we have that, once again, straight ahead V cup type tone in the louder dynamics. <laughs> Again, that sort of spectrum is not my preferred type of sound for brass band playing. The reason I like my Dennis Wick 2B is because it maintains that buttery sound for a greater portion of that dynamic range. You really have to cross that forte line before you brighten up the sound. And I suppose that's partially my background as third chair in the brass band speaking, because the 2B is efficient enough for me, but I also need that buttery sound so that I can sort of assimilate into the upper two chairs sound. I don't like to stick out if I can help it, at least not with any edge in my sound. I like a lot of mid to low frequencies. I also mentioned that that V cup of the BBC mouthpieces tends to be a little bit more efficient than the bull cup counterparts. Whereas on the 2B, I don't find terribly much high register security beyond, let's say, E flat. On the Curry 3 BBC, besides E natural, which is a total blind spot note for me for some reason, I found great high register slots up through high F, up to double G, those kinds of notes. Those were all really, really solid. And something that I find to be a really strong point of the Curry 3 BBC is that it allows for both the pull and push approach from the player. A lot of brass band mouthpieces, Dennis Wick being a prime example, really hate being pushed. If you engage that sensation of shoving air down the cup of the mouthpiece, basically the sound breaks up and they stop responding the right way. Whereas if you use too shallow of a mouthpiece on the cornet, something like a box C cup, that's very contentious as far as brass band use goes, then they really can't play with that pull approach where you sort of just let the instrument do the work. You pull back and the instrument makes the music. That doesn't really happen on those box C cups nearly as well. They kind of necessitate a little bit of push from the player. You kind of have to drill the air a little bit and then you end up with a sound that is not necessarily in keeping with the British brass band. But what I like about the Curry is that you can pull back or push forth. And that's how you get essentially the two sounds. You pull back, you get that Dennis Wick sound, you push, and you don't quite get a box C cup sound, those get just ugly at fortissimo, but you do get a sound that is more reminiscent of shallower and more efficient cups if you push. Now to hopefully A, clarify some of my more opinionated statements, and B, begin to round off this rather rambly mouthpiece review, I'd like to once again pull up my lovely MS Paint diagram. When it comes to these traditional brass band cornet mouthpiece cups, I like to be somewhere in the middle for my personal greatest ease of tone production. If I'm playing on something really stupidly deep, then I want to make sure I have that efficiency and added flexibility and sort of crispness of the V cup, something like my Yamaha 16E. 
Whereas if I really seek that buttery sound at all dynamics of that U cup, then I don't want it to be terribly deep, kind of the way I'm doing with my Dennis Wick 2B. If you play on too deep of a massive U cup, kind of like the Dennis Wick 2, you tend to get a sound that's tubby and not very pleasing or resonant, and a mouthpiece that's extremely tough to play for long periods of time, and that's why I and most other cornet players don't use things like Dennis Wick 2s anymore for front row playing. But on the other side of the spectrum, if you use something that's a little bit shallower like the B cup, but then also V-shaped like the Yamaha E cup, and you end up with something like the Curry 3 BBC, then you end up with, once again, a little bit even more efficiency than the Dennis Wick 2B or the Yamaha 16E. But for me personally, I find that the sound gets away from me and turns a little bit too bright for my sensibilities if I push it. I think the BBC cup is just dandy for probably 90-95% to 95 of brass band cornet players. Me personally, I'd love to see an ex-BBC in Curry's line, you know, an extra deep brass band cornet cup but that's just me, and again, I think you'll do just dandy with the BBC Cup if you're not as naturally bright of a player as I am. If thus far you've managed to keep this video open and stay awake, kudos to you, have a cookie from me. I really appreciate you sticking around. Watch time is super important on YouTube, and anytime I get super nerdy and into the weeds like this about a mouthpiece and British brass band cups, I run sort of a gamble because I imagine a lot of my viewers probably click off about a minute and a half in, so, for sticking around this long, I really, really appreciate you. If you want to check out more mouthpiece spotlights of similar levels of nerdiness, once again, the top right corner in the card is the ticket. You'll find plenty more there. One last thing, if you haven't yet subscribed to my channel, again, if you've stuck around this long, you probably enjoyed it at least a little bit, right? So, check to make sure that you actually are subscribed and consider subscribing if you're not. Like, a lot of my usual viewers, subscribing is a simple gesture with a huge impact on the channel and keeps you up to date with more content like this. Until next time, we'll see you on the flip side. Thanks for watching everybody. If you want to support the creation of bigger and better content on the Samuel Plays Brass channel, have your name featured right here, and a whole host of other perks and benefits, then please consider pledging your support at patreon.com slash samuelplaysbrass. For now, you can find more videos in the end screen cards to my left.